and we are live let me see quickly on hey yeah we are live let me quickly set few things okay my youtube is echoing all right hello everyone uh welcome to this online meetup five this is so easy right like you are just sitting at your home or wherever you have a good place to sit and look at it right and uh, what we are going to do today is for this session we have adam mead he's um, he's my colleague at my office so i, I really know him and uh, what we are going to talk about in this one is how we can use hashicorp's vault connector with mule 4 right uh, it, it's something interesting uh, to learn about to know and to use in your mule 4 applications with that it, it's i know it's it's late for um, so many of you so we really appreciate you guys joining us tonight i think it's in india it's quite late it's afternoon here some mornings like that so it's good so with that i will not take a lot of time and give us an opportunity to start the session with that adam the stage is yours so you can start hello everybody uh thank you Monique. um i will start sharing right away Oh, well, sorry, it's, there we go. Okay, so today I'm talking to you about um, the HashiCorp vault connectors that we created for Mule 4. So I'm gonna walk through what a vault is, uh, some vault use cases, uh, the vault connector and vault properties provider that created, uh, some of the tests that we created for this as well, as well as demoing the uh, provider and connector. So what is vault? Uh, vault is the tool for securely storing and accessing secrets. So it provides uh, centralized secret storage for uh, storing all of the information you want to keep private in your organization. Uh, it encrypts the secrets at rest and in transit, and it provides an audit trail of access to secrets. Uh, it also provides fine-grained access controls and uh, encryption as a service as well. Now there's an open source version of Vault, and there's also an enterprise version of Vault, uh, which provides uh, some additional features such as uh, a replication across multiple sites uh, uh, as, as well as some other things like that. So what are some of the vault use cases? Secrets management is the, the main thing. So you can provide or keep secrets for, from multiple different types of uh, secrets engines, such as AWS, if you, provisioning uh, AWS instances or databases if you want to retrieve a, a username and password for a database before logging in uh, for one-time use, as well as a key value store, uh, among many other things. You can see on the right side of the page here, we have a long list of secrets engines and some with multiple uh, subtypes. Uh, there's dynamic secrets engines as well, such as uh, the database secrets engine, which allows you to generate that username and password and given a specific role uh, when uh, you're logging into a database. Uh, this way, you can provide access for a short term period and then uh, kill the access after it's no longer needed. So I'll show an example of that in a little bit as well. Uh, Vault also provides for data encryption. This way, you don't have to uh, write your own encryption or pull in a library you don't know much about. Uh, Vault will can handle encrypting and decrypting uh, data 
and uh, keys for that encryption can be rotated on a regular basis uh, as well, or on demand as necessary. So your application will send app the data to Vault, Vault will encrypt it and then return that encrypted data. And then you can either store that in Vault or in another data source. So now the Vault connector and Vault properties provider are uh, some connectors that we created for MuleSoft for connecting to, to Vault. Uh, they allow applications to connect to Vault, uh, authenticating either via token, uh, TLS certificate using AWS uh, identity document, instance metadata, or IAM. Now there are many other uh, available authentication options for Vault, but these are the ones that we decided to start with. So we'll show that in a few moments as well. So the properties provider, or sorry, the Vault connector allows you to read and write secrets uh, from the Vault uh, secrets engines. It also allows you to encrypt, decrypt, and re-encrypt data. So it's kind of a, a different uh, option that way. So for re-encryption here, you don't have to resend uh, the unencrypted data. You can just send the encrypted data and have it re-encrypt under a new key. Uh, we also created this properties provider, which will allow you to read secrets out of the secrets engine. And those properties are read from Vault when your application is started up. So if uh, you have to change the secret for some reason, it would take an application restart in order to reread those secrets. Whereas the Vault connector will do reading and writing in real time. All right. So we use test container to do some testing to spin up a new instance of Vault in a container for each test, uh, loading up every, all the data that we need and all of that. Uh, I'm sure many of you have used test container tests as, uh, previously. Uh, I recommend it, it's very nice. Uh, here's just some additional sample. So before the class is run, we're initializing the vault container, enabling the secrets engine, uh, setting up a sample secret, uh, creating a client cert certificate and key, and uh, setting up the backend certificate as well. And then inside of our test, we are basically just pulling in the value for the uh, my secret. All right, let's go into a demo. Oops, sorry, switching over to the AnyPoint Studio. All right, so here is uh, just a sample that I have that I created to demonstrate this. Uh, you'll see I have a uh, a flow that is connecting to a database and retrieving information and then uh, returning that. And just very simple things, no, no error handling added in here at all. But uh, we've got the get secret, encrypting data, decrypting data, re-encrypting data. So all that uh, fun jazz is in there as well. So now configuring the connection to Vault, here is uh, just a basic connection where I'm specifying the vault URL, uh, the secrets engine version I'm using um, for the key value secrets engine. There's two versions available right now. So uh, providing the option to choose which one you, you're using. And then uh, a vault token. Uh, now this token that I have in here, I generated specifically for this use and uh, it's limited to which uh, secrets it can read and write. Um, this is only valid for 48 hours, but I can also renew it or farm out new things. So if you can do pretty much what you want with a fault token. Um, so there's also um, EC2 uh, available for authentication and IAM and then also TLS. So here you'd specify which uh, TLS, 
oops, authentication providers you want to do. So you specify the key store and the key store password, and then uh, it would use those for connecting to Vault. And in addition, I've got, so I've got three different ones. Here is the Vault properties provider. Here I'm specifying the URL as well as the Vault token and the KV version as well. In this one, I'm specifying version one uh, because uh, it's not actually connecting to a key value version. It's a key store. It's only connecting to uh, the database key store. Sorry, I said key store, I meant secrets engine. <laughs> Um, so now if we look at the database configuration, I'm sorry, dogs are barking in the background. So now in our database configuration, you'll see that the user and password are actually using uh, the properties provider. So if you specify vault colon colon, and then the path to your secret, and then the property you would like to retrieve out of that secret, uh, it will retrieve that from the secrets engine on startup. So this is connecting to Vault and going to the database creds company role and retrieving the username. And then down here, we're retrieving the password. And then I'll show you the, oops. Hey, um, uh, Adam. Yes. Uh, could could you please open those connector configurations and show? Because I see a uh, question on there. Like, can you open the connector configuration and show the details of what? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it must not have shared when I <laughs> did it. Yeah, probably That's... something like that. Yeah. Let us share the whole screen instead. Yeah. Okay. That should be better. Can you see yeah, that now? Uh, Good. Yeah. <laughs> Good. I'm sorry, I was describing it and you weren't seeing anything. Uh, no, so fine. here you'll see that we've got the Vault URL, the Secrets Engine version, and then the Vault token. And then under connection type here, you've got EC2, IAM, and TLS options available as well. And I showed in TLS, we're saying here's the key store file, and here's the password for that key store. And uh, that's what it's going to use for authentication into Vault. And then back in the database configuration, since you couldn't see it, you'll see I've got uh, this dollar sign, curly brace, uh, Vault colon colon signifies that this is a Vault properties provider property. And it needs to use the properties provider from uh, the Vault properties provider in order to retrieve that property just like you would with um, the secure property provider. Um, and then here we're specifying that we're going to the database creds company role secret. And then the period is saying, okay, now I want to specify a specific value, uh, value in that secret, which is the username. So I'm retrieving the username for the user and then the password for the password. Now we'll oops, jump over to Postman and blow this up so you don't have to see the video in the background. Um, so now I'm retrieving, uh, I've just called it users. We're going to retrieve the users from the database, retrieving the password from Vault. So voila, we've retrieved those users from the database and connected to Vault for that. So now if I jump back over, Sorry for jumping around so much. This is the Vault UI. And here we can see there's different secrets engines. This time I connected to the database secrets engine and retrieved that username and password. And those were generated for one-time use and are actually only uh, accessible for an hour. Um, uh, you'd want to use a much longer timeout, of course, if you're <laughs> really running it in your application to retrieve that. But uh, you can specify those timeouts when you're setting up the secrets engine. And then also we've got uh, 
a secret stored in here and it's the API key for Google. So here I've got all of my uh, Google API key details. And let's say I wanna treat that as well. So if we go back to Postman and we're gonna get that secret and in here I'm specifying, I want the secret API key Google. So that's the same path that we saw here. So secret API key Google. Now, if I execute that, there, I just retrieved the secret from Google. And that is not real information. So, <laughs> um, so now in here, I can change the, the details at any point. Let's say I wanna change this URI. So I'll create a new version. And I'll change this URI to something fun. And now I want to go back and retrieve that secret again. Oh, make sure it's saved. It did. I'll pop back over here. And if I run it again, you'll see that my auth URI changed to something fun. So that is a real time change. Whereas if the database password changed, I would need to restart my application to uh, pull that property again. Now back over here, I can also, let's say you find out that a specific token is being used to uh, access secrets that should not be accessed, or maybe the, the application has been compromised and you, know, you need to revoke all of its access. Well, from the access, I can go into my leases and see, okay, well, they're accessing this database. I need to revoke their privileges. So here I can come and revoke it. There, now it's revoked. And if I try to execute the request again, it's failing. It can no longer get a connection to the database. So that's kind of the power of Vault. Uh, allows you to find, find grain control over access to those secrets. And this connector allows you to access those in a nice way. So now let's go into, I forgot to open IntelliJ. All right, so now uh, some additional resources. I, we've I've put out a blog post about to open on top of it. Sorry. <laughs> Stop sharing so it stops. Chrome opened up in a weird way. I can't get back to my. Sorry, it's one moment. Try this again. Okay, so I uh, I have a blog post out about this as well uh, that you can go to avioconsulting.com slash blog to find. And then you can also get the source code for the connectors um, at on GitHub uh, under the audio consulting group here are a couple of links and we'll be posting these in uh, up so you can retrieve them off this video as well. All right, now, Stop sharing one more time, get IntelliJ open so you can see some of this code. Hopefully it won't open up in a weird way again.
Okay. Here we go. So here is our, oops, here is our vault connector uh, with multiple different providers available. Um, it is using the um, vault Java driver uh, from Better Cloud at, at this point in time for connecting to vault, yeah, uh, which is possible to zoom in. Oh, sure. Oh, maybe. <laughs> Give us one. I think I'm going to if you click on presentation mode, it zooms in something. In the view. In the view? Yeah, view tabs. Yeah, enter presentation mode. Oh, it's oh nice. And of course, it opened all yeah, of them. <laughs> and it moved to a new desktop. There we go. So here you'll see it's the Better Cloud Vault Java driver. No, how do I switch back? I just closed it, didn't I? <laughs> All right. So now if we jump back over and share one more time. Okay, so this is the custom properties provider as well. So here it is also basically we're specifying that the pattern needs to be sorry, I zoomed in, it's a little harder to get to. So here's our pre, we're specifying our prefixes vault. Um, and then the pattern is basically anything followed by a period followed by anything. So you can, that's how you would specify a property to retrieve from, from vault. Now, if you want to pull this code in yourself, download it, um, you can change your prefix, you can do whatever you'd like, um, and then uh, put it in your in your own environment to use. Uh, right now, we don't have this available through um, through the MuleSoft Exchange. Uh, however, we are working on getting that in there as well. All right. <laughs> I think that's uh, everything I have uh, on the presentation. Are there any questions? Yes. Okay. That's that, that that's a good good one, really. So um, I think few few people joined a little late. So if you could on the first screen, just do a quick recap, like one minute recap of what the connector is and what is the use case and um, where to get it. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I'll jump back over to. Slides. Okay, so the connector allows you to the right slide to connect to Vault to retrieve secret information. Um, the connector will do a real time connection from your flow to retrieve the secret information and then, and then you can use it in your flow going forward. Uh, whereas the vault properties provider is more for use uh, for retrieving that secret information um, on startup of your, um, your MuleSoft application. 
So that, that properties provider would retrieve, for instance, uh, in my example, is a, a database username and password uh, to use inside of that connector to connect to a database uh, using one-time uh, use generated uh, passwords and users. Uh, you can reach, get the connector uh, from our uh, GitHub repo at uh, the github.com slash audio consulting slash mule vault properties provider and mule vault connector. So there's a separate repo for each one. And then both are connected, uh, both are linked to from uh, my blog post on the audio consulting blog as well. And then the blog also has um, a description as well of each one and when to use them. Uh, that's good. I think what, what I'll do at the end is um, I, I can put those links into description. So people who are watching the recordings, they have those links handy at uh, in the description section of this video itself. Right. Uh, one, one of the question uh, I see there is the demo application that you was using. Is it is it available to see? Like, is that shared somewhere on the GitHub that demo application? Uh, this specific demo application is not, but within the source code um, for mm -hmm. the um, for both of the connector and the properties provider, mm -hmm. uh, there are demo applications which are uh, here. So here's one quick where it's just setting the payload, giving given a specific property. So here oh, you can I, see how the property. Uh, I, th I think you're sharing on the different uh, screen. Oh, I we can still see the sure. slide. Yeah. <laughs> we can still see the say, uh, slide. Yeah, it's loading up. Sharing. Okay. Now, can you see that? Yeah. Uh, okay. All, right. All right. So here is um, there's a vault properties demo and a vault connector demo. Um, each of those is held within the repository on GitHub as well. So okay, the, that, one spit, the one that I was just showing today has them both combined, but okay. um, each of them uh, is available on GitHub within the, the repo for the actual connector and the properties provider. Okay, that's cool. So, so I think once I put those uh, links in the description, you will have access to the those demo apps also, so, right? Correct. Okay, so uh, let's look at some questions I see on here. Let me scroll up and start from the beginning. Uh, so I'm just doing the presentation. Let me stop sharing for now. Yeah. Uh, so first. Brajesh, Candies, Kamsi, okay, configuration the set details and connector configuration. We already looked at that. Sumant, uh, just a thought extending this to combine Vault and Spring Cloud config features into one connector. Spring Cloud, Vault, secrets could be pulled from Vault and regular configuration will be pulled from Git. Uh, I'm not sure what exactly that would mean, but is it something? to use this vault connector with spring cloud config do you have have you thought about anything like that have you, have you used spring cloud config i have not actually um but it i mean if you wanted to use both in conjunction i suppose you could combine them into one but um if you're keeping some properties in one place and some properties in another place it can get mm -hmm. really confusing so um, you might as well store them all can, you know, in a nice secure environment like, like Vault. Okay. okay. So uh, Vinayak's question is, is it possible to get temporary AWS credentials using IAM rules and use those temporary credentials with TTL of one hour? And then inbound or outbound connector can basically rotate those credentials. So can it be done through connector? You rotate the... Uh, it's not... It's not something I've tried. Um, the actual rotation you would probably need to do, uh, we probably need to implement something new in the connector to do that. Uh, right now it is just doing the retrieval and uh, writing of secrets. Mm -hmm. um, 
but I, I think it could be done. Uh, there, there is an AWS secrets engine available. Uh, thus, it, it should be possible. Yeah, so, so in that case, uh, I'm assuming all that rotation configuration would exist on the wall side or that secret engine side. You will configure your credential, con uh, credential there. And every time connector requests for a specific credential, it will get whatever is the current value uh, current value for that yeah or a new a brand new one might be created uh, on yeah. the fly for okay. that one use um, okay but as, as far as like forcing a rotation you would uh, that's not something that's implemented in the um connector right now but could potentially be okay okay and uh, okay. I, I think it was the same question Rajesh, you were to can what properties provider be Create a temporary credentials at the runtime, and it, it's it's same like it has to be on the connector side. Uh, sorry, secret engine side, right? Right, right. Yeah, there are several dynamic secrets engines that allow that. Um, mm -hmm. So um, yeah, Vault is handling most of that. Okay, okay. Uh, All of that. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, Amos. I think um, Adam already mentioned for mules for the connector is not on the public exchange yet. Uh, and he, he did mention that we are working on getting that to public exchange. So if that goes to public, there will be, I, I can update the description and put it there. But other than that, for now, it you can easily get the connector source and build it and publish it to. I think, uh, Adam, am I right? Like your blog also contains how to publish it to your uh, organization, right? It does. OK, so yeah, I mean, that, that is another way you can get the source and publish it to your own uh, Mulesoft exchange for your organization. And then you can use it across your organization. Uh, Bridges' question is, if you change the credentials, does it require an application restart? Um, the, which credential? If, you t if it's the credentials for connecting to Vault, it will require a restart. If it's okay. credentials you're retrieving from Vault, um, if you're using the properties provider to re get those, yes, you will need to do a restart. If you are using the connector, uh, you will not need to restart. Okay, so so that, that depends on what is your use case, but just whether you are looking for properties, like using a properties provider, are using as just a credential provider or properties provider, it looks like it, it will require it. Yes, those properties are only loaded at, at application startup time. So right. And I and I believe that is the typical behavior of uh, any properties provider in new like properties are always read read at the start of the application. Right. Yeah. That, that's good. Cool. Okay, let's see the next one. Uh, Can you explain how to use Vault Connector as encryption as a service? Oh, sure, yes. Um, let me just share my screen one more time. Mm -hmm. I do have that example in here. Um, we are going to go back here. So in the sample, actually, we'll go to the connector demo, which is available on GitHub. There is, uh, there's decrypt, there's re-encrypt, there's encrypt. So um, you you drop in your the encrypted data um, item there, and then you specify um, where the transit secrets engine is. That's the secrets engine that is used for uh, the encryption of data. And then you specify the key that you want to use for the encryption. And the user that you're connected to Vault with has to have access to that key. And then you specify the, the, the payload value would be the, the plain text that you would like to encrypt. So here, I'm just retrieving it out of the payload. Okay. So that, that's how then you expose that service uh... Right, right. Yeah. And then um, I'll, I'll, I'll have an example of it here as well in Postman. Get that open. 
So here I'm encrypting. So this is some random. Is there a way to zoom in on that? I don't know if they allow it. Yes. Sorry, my screen is massive. Um, and yeah, there isn't a good zoom. I'll just change the resolution, maybe. Oh, that works. Yeah, that's what we do. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> here we have. Uh, so the, my plain text is this is some random text. I'll send that in, and Vault is responding with the encrypted text. So I'm just dumping it back out in my response, but um, you can yeah. use that in in your flow anywhere. Right. So and, and the format the format for the encrypted data is Vault colon version of the key. So version one colon um, the encrypted data. That's that that's cool. So that that will that will allow you to expose as encryption as a service, right? Exactly. And then let's say we want to decrypt. I've got decrypt here as well. So if I go to my body, I'll just change this to what I just encrypted. And I can send that. And here you see I got my plain text back. That's nice. And so that uses the same same general uh, details, just uh, using the decrypt data instead of encrypt data. OK, OK, that, that's cool. And then yeah. one more thing, uh, re-encrypt mm -hmm. is the same settings as well. But if you were to update or rotate your encryption key, then you could send in with the old key and get uh, the data re-encrypted under the new key. So that, that, that can possibly allow you to rotate your keys, but then from your client side, you will have to keep calling and rotating your keys, right? Right, right. So if I go back into Vault here, and I look mm -hmm. at my transit secret engine with my demo key, there's only, oops, I got to go to edit encryption key. So right now, I can just update my encryption key. Oops, key actions, wrong one. And uh, I always get lost on where this is. <laughs> anyway, in, in here, yeah. uh, there is a way to right, basically create a new key. You never see the key. Vault holds that key. Okay. And then you would send in data encrypted under the old key to be re-encrypted under the new key. Okay, okay. That's good. Uh, the next one, I think we already, uh, also we already answered Vinayak Sanbaj's question. Is the world connector available on any point exchange? I think we covered that too. It's not right now, but we are. I think you said we are working on that. But yeah. until then, it's always, the source code is available on Avia Consulting, GitHub slash Avia Consulting organization. So, you can always go there and get it. For Raja, can I get a custom connector like a jar? I think that's how, if you get that source code and if you build, it should build a custom connector jar, right, Adam? Correct. Yep, that's exactly what yeah. it is. So that's that's there. Um, Pramod says, what is something new to him? Uh, so I understand AWS or other SaaS providers, security of data when at rest and in transit. Why would one still use walls? First of all, I mean, I mean, like, uh, really, from from why would one still use walls is a little different scope to justify the walls use case, right? Right, the walls, right, right. Walls existence itself, Hashikov's walls existence. I'm sure there are like so many resources would be available for that, but generally that should be used for if you want to have something inter um, inter internal encryption mechanism? Right, right. OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and Vault basically just allows you to have one centralized location for, for everything that all the teams can use. And if you didn't want to use some other encryption, you could use Vault's encryption as, or secrets, that, that transit secrets engine to do mm -hmm. encryption yourself. OK, 
okay that's nice so uh, that is interesting question i think the next one how this can be done for the inbound connector like sqs so is there any difference between using this for inbound connector versus outbound um that's a good question um i guess i haven't really set it up as inbound it's always outbound to retrieve from vault yeah but I, I do wonder like and what will be the use case to have vault connector as an as a source or inbound right what will you yeah right i mean there? yeah you can't really control vault to do the uh, connection to you yeah um, so is, is there anything specific wasanta you was looking for when you asked that question like what is the use case you are thinking this question i'm asking back to wasanta if there is anything specific he is looking for in there. So while waiting on that, let's see. Uh, Bridges says, but as per Win's question, is it possible in inbound? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to link back to his question. What else? Oh, yeah. It's the same inbound. Let's see uh, if, if there is any specific use case that is being looked for. So Tony's question is like, what is the fallback mechanism when a connection to vault continuously fails or access to the internet is not available? Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's a very good question. Um, basically, you, you just need to make sure that your vault is highly available. Um, there is, really isn't a good fallback mechanism when so vault does, isn't available if it's storing all of your secret information right but does the does the connector now supports the standard reconnection strategies that comes up with connector like a probably reconnect for forever or do a certain number of reconnection attempts um <laughs> uh, it does provide some out of the box features for the let me go back to the global elements so there is some reconnection uh, available as well so it will it basically this is just using the standard um available um, yeah. reconnection strategy yeah. uh, and the, the, the uh, that is provided out of the box by sdk itself right like there's nothing special you need to do for for this part Right. Yeah. I. Um, this is actually all um, implemented by the SDK. So it's. I mean, nothing I've had to actually implement inside of the connector myself. Right. Okay. Okay. That's good. Uh, the next is: Can we use console template for reloading configuration using connector? I, um, I don't see why you couldn't use a console template. Uh, then you wouldn't need to use the the vault properties provider at that point. You just use the console template. Okay. So that wow. what, the, what the console template does is it it will can retrieve data from vault as well and create a properties file that gets read by um, your your Microsoft applications. Okay, but but wouldn't that then change the properties file and it would will need, it would. It, so will it still read it dynamically? It's, Sorry, it's yeah. yeah, it's created dynamically um, mm -hmm. to when properties are changed and then read by the application. So you wouldn't need to use the properties provider at all then. Okay. So but if you, you want to do any real-time retrieval, you'd want to use the vault connector still. Okay. Okay. I, I haven't used console, so I'm still thinking um, how it will work. Probably I should give it a try to uh, see how it works. But that that's good. Like you can then dynamically change your properties, right? Yes, yes. Okay, that's good. Uh, it's an alternative. Yeah. Uh, Bala, your question, I am not sure about that. Like, can we expect certification vouchers for it? I think it doesn't apply to online meetup. I know it definitely works for the regional local meetups. I work with um, uh, New South community team and see what can be done and cannot be done. But at this point, I don't think 
uh, you get a certification voucher for online things. We'll see. I'll, I'll keep you everyone posted through the regular announcements if that changes. But yeah. Uh, Afnan, uh, how many secret calls can a vault node handle per second or per minute? Is oh, there any question? I don't know that off the top of my head. Um, it's uh, that that I believe is available on the vault um, documentation. Oh, okay, so that's something on the vault configuration part, like nothing connector differentiates about that type. Right, right. Okay, so to rotate keys while we are listening to the queue or due to internal compliance, I think that is the use case uh, Vasanta was looking for inbound. So if I understand that correctly, it's like if my credentials are rotating on vault side and I want to keep listening to those new keys, meaning use okay. vault connector as an inbound. Yeah. Um as far as I know, Vault does not provide uh, an outbound notification when those are ch changed. Right. So you would need to have your own timer set up to go and check for those updated available, you know, updated keys. Okay, so that that is something uh, like put a scheduler to check at certain times and keep pulling for the. Uh, then it's a regular outbound Vault connector. It's not an inbound really. It's outbound. Right. You are going to Vault. So, and that is probably because Vault is not providing any outbound connections from Vault side. Right. Okay. That's. I hope that answers um, inbound related questions. Wasn't uh, Rajesh for a weekend retrieve Vault provider or Vault for SQL connector? It's the same thing. How does the user service authenticate to Vault to obtain the dynamic credential? OK, um, to obtain the dynamic credentials, um, you'd still have to authenticate to Vault using like a token or um, one of the other authentication mechanisms. And then um, call to that dynamic secrets engine to retrieve the credentials for uh, whatever that dynamic secrets engine is for, be that the database mm -hmm. or AWS. So you'd still need to authenticate to Vault, and those um, shouldn't change too okay. frequently. Okay, so it, it's something the first authentication to to Vault typical way you will do it. So there's no, uh, I don't know, there's a change. Okay, uh, I believe that's that was the last question. Did I miss any anybody's question? Uh, I'm just scanning through it. I think I covered everybody's question. I'll, I'll leave. Uh, we, I think we are already past time, so I'll leave one more minute for anyone. If I have missed their question, please put it back in there, and I will take that. Hey, Joshua. Okay, um, I'm just scanning. I think we got uh, we got uh, all the questions. Good. That, that, that should be it. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Uh, thanks for all the questions joining us tonight here. It was a great discussion. Thank you, Adam, for this one. I will I will get all the all those links and put it in the description uh, so that people who are watching it later they have those links handy and can go back and uh, look at the uh, look at the code connector and the demos. All right. Thank you. See you in the next meetup online then. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Bye.